Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to create some animations using CSS. All right, let's get started, everybody. We will create a div element with an ID of box. Then within this box, let's say the word hi. Let's go to our style sheet. Let's select our ID of box. I will set the width to be 250 pixels, the height to be 250 pixels. I'll change the background color. Let's pick something red. Let's change the font size. 13 EM is fine. Then text align center. To use an animation, we first need to create an animation using a keyframe rule. That can be done with typing at keyframes, then a unique animation name. Let's create an animation to slide this element from the right to the left. The name will be slide left. Then add a set of curly braces. Within our keyframe, there's a few possible values. You have to, from, or a percent, such as 0, 50, 100, really any number. We'll begin with a left translation. For our element to end up in its resting position, we will use from, then add a set of curly braces, just like we're adding CSS properties. Within our keyframe of from, we will set the transform property to be an X translation. Translate X parentheses. This can be an amount or a percent. Let's begin with 100 pixels. So now I need to set the animation name property within our box. Animation name will be slide left. But when I refresh everything, nothing appears to happen. That's because we need to set the animation duration property. Animation duration. How long will this animation take to complete? Let's start with one second. That's one S. There's our slide animation. Feel free to adjust this value. If I set this to be two seconds, it's slightly slower. Let's change translate X to a different value like 100%. This element is translating on the X axis by 100% the width of the element. If I were to set this to a larger number like 300, it's going to appear off screen in my example, then slide into place. But that also depends on how far you're zoomed in or zoomed out and the width of your web browser. Let's create an animation to slide right. Let's copy our keyframe rule rename slide left as slide right. We'll use the value of two. We'll begin in our original position. We're setting this animation to end up in this position with our element translated to the right by 300%. Let's change the animation to slide right. And now we slide to the right. Okay, let's slide up. Keyframes, slide up. We'll set the value to be from, then we will translate Y. Change the animation name to slide up. There we go. Then slide down. All we really need to do is change this value. So that's slide down, change from to be two. Then change the animation name again, slide down. Let's create a rotation animation at keyframes rotate so we can use from or to or a percent let's use percentages at 100 percent what sort of transformation do we want to complete let's use the transform property then do an x rotation rotate x by 360 degrees that's one full rotation Okay, let's change the animation name to rotate. Now we should rotate once on the x-axis. Let's rotate on the y-axis, rotate y. Then rotate on the z-axis, rotate z. So those are a few rotations. Now check this out. If I were to set the keyframe value to be 50%, we will complete this animation at the 50% mark. Then from 50% to 100, in a way we undo the animation. We'll rotate once and then revert back. Complete the animation 
at 50% of the length of the duration. Then with the other 50% of the time remaining, return that element to where it was previously. If I were to mess with these values, let's say 25%, we'll complete the animation in half a second. Then with the other 1.5 seconds, we return to normal. That's why the animation goes fast. Then when it's undone, it goes fairly slow. You can mess with these values depending on what you're looking for exactly. Yeah, you can use from, to, or a percent. Okay, let's create an animation to grow this element. We'll scale both the width and the height. At keyframes grow. At the 100% mark, let's set the transform property to be scale. Then we can use two values. Two means 200%. For the width, scale that up by 200%. Same with the height, 200%. Let's change the animation to be grow. Then this should grow. Then when the animation is complete, it snaps back into place. But if I were to set this value to be 50%, it's going to grow, then shrink back into place in one smooth motion. Let's create an animation to shrink. At keyframes, shrink. At the 50% mark, let's use the transform property, then scale by 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. That will be 50% for the width and the height. Let's change the animation name to be shrink, and now we'll shrink this element. Then it reverts back into place. Okay, let's change the opacity at keyframes. This animation name will be fade. At the 50% mark, let's change the opacity. We're not using the transform property this time. Let's set the opacity to be zero. Then change the animation name to be fade. Now we'll fade out, then back in again. If I were to set this value to be 100, this element will fade. Then when the animation is normal, it reverts. Not smoothly though. Let's set that to 50. Now if you want a fade in effect, what we can do is with our box, Originally, we can set the opacity to be zero. Then at the 100% keyframe, the opacity will then be one. So this is fade in, let's say. So the element is originally hidden, then it fades in. Let's get rid of the opacity. Let's change the color of our element. At keyframes, color change. So at 0%, let's have the background color be red. I'll copy the current background color. I'll change the animation name to color change. Then at 20%, let's set the background color to be orange. So we're going from red to orange. Then at 40, let's pick yellow. Sixty will be green. Eighty will be blue. Then one hundred will be purple. There. You can take the liberty to pick whatever values you would like. Let's create a glow effect around our element. At keyframes glow. This animation will complete at the 50% mark. We'll add a box shadow. The first value is for the horizontal offset. We'll set that to be zero. The next value is for the vertical offset, which will also be zero. Then the blur radius. I'll set that to be 50 pixels. Then a color. Let's go with a yellowish color. All right, then we need to change the animation name. Glow. Then our element glows. It's a little difficult to see though with the white background. Let me change the background color. So with the body of our document, I will set the background color to be 
a dark color. There's our glow effect. You can start animations with a pseudo class. For example, I want this glow animation to occur when I hover my cursor over the element. I am selecting my box ID, then applying the pseudo class of hover. I'll take the animation name and the duration, then place it within the hover pseudo class for our box. Then this animation only begins when I hover my cursor over the box. Pretty cool, right? If I were to use the active pseudo class, this animation only occurs when I left click and hold the element, which I am doing right now. Let's place these properties back. To change the iteration count for an animation, to have it occur more than once, we can set the animation iteration count property to be some other value besides one. If I set this value to be two, we will perform this animation twice. To have it perform infinitely, set that to be infinite. I would not recommend setting an animation to be infinite just because a viewer can find it annoying, unless that's the goal, to annoy the viewer. All right, there's also animation direction. Animation direction. Normally, this is well normal. We can change the direction of the animation by setting normal to be reverse. Now we're sliding to the right. To alternate, set the value to be alternate. We're sliding left, then sliding right, then sliding left again. There's also alternate reverse. We begin by sliding to the right, then to the left and then to the right again. Let's set that to be normal. To pause the animation, we can set the animation place state to be paused. Now the animation is paused. To run it again, set this value to be running. This would be useful in conjunction with a programming language such as JavaScript because we can toggle this animation on and off. There's also the animation timing function. Normally with this animation, it accelerates, then slows down, it decelerates. The default value is ease in out. It speeds up, then slows down before it reaches its destination. For a constant speed, we can change that to be linear. Through the entire animation duration, it stays the same speed. There's also steps for a sort of stop motion effect. Within this function, if I place the value 5, there's 5 steps. If this was 10, there's 10 steps to complete the animation. It creates a stop motion effect. Let's change that back to ease in out. Let's set the iteration count to be 1. The next timing function is for cubic bezier. Let's right click on our box, inspect, underneath our styles tab, look for animation timing function. If we were to click on this purple box, we can change the timing function. Currently it's ease in out. And there's a little sample animation at the top. This is fast out linear in, ease out, or by dragging and dropping this line, we can make something custom. Like, I don't know what this does. To use this animation, copy this line of text for cubic bezier, replace the animation timing function with that line of text. So now we have that custom animation. I don't really know what to name this animation. Let's name it the electric slide. For a final exercise, let's apply an animation to an image. I just so happen to have an image of Shrek. Let's have Shrek perform our electric slide animation. Let's replace our box with an image element. Set the source to equal the relative file path. So Shrek is right next to my index file. Shrek.png. Let's copy all of these animation properties. Cut them. 
we'll select our image, then paste those animation properties. Now Shrek will perform that electric slide animation. Pretty cool, right? All right, everybody, that is an introduction to animations using CSS.